Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson six, identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in graphs. So today we're going to do an activity in class. So I'm not going to be able to do this entire thing on video. I'm just going to give an example of maybe two of these examples. And in class, they're going to create poster boards with a table, graphs, and an explanation as to whether or not their list of items or their word problem was a proportion or not. Okay, so today's exploratory challenge is an extension of lesson five. You'll be working in groups to create a table and a graph and to identify whether the two coins are proportional to each other. So poster layout use for the notes. So this is what we're going to, or use for notes. So we're going to use this for notes. So here's a graph and the problem and the table. So I'm gonna bring in the problem and here it is and just let me resize that. Okay, so here's the problem. It says group one, a local frozen yogurt shop is known for its monster sundaes to be shared by a group. The ratios represent the number of toppings to the total cost of the toppings create a table and then graph and explain if the quantities are proportional to each other okay so that is the problem right there and now i'll bring in the data okay so here's our data so we want to create a table here graph the points here and then tell if it's proportional or not okay so if i do a table um, we want number of toppings and cost of those toppings. Okay, so here's my table. And this is 420. So that means four toppings to zero. Number of toppings, total cost of toppings in dollars. I'll put money there too. So four toppings, zero. So maybe the first four toppings are free. Okay. If we have six toppings, then it's going to cost us $3. And if we have eight toppings, it's going to cost us $6. And the total cost of a 10 topping Sunday is $9. And then finally 12 to 12. 12 toppings cost $12. Okay, so there is our data in a table, and now I'm going to graph this. In order to graph this, we should always label our axes. Okay, so this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. Number of toppings would be x, cost of the toppings is y. All right, and this is the origin, zero. And we're going to go out to one, two. I'm just gonna mark every other one so it's not crowded, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and that is number of toppings. And then we're going to do Y, the cost in dollars. And the cost is going to go from zero to 12. So I'm gonna do the same thing, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I'm gonna skip here as well. So I'm going to go by twos. So this is two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this is twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So now we're going to plot these points. The point four zero is looks like this if we were to write it as an ordered pair, and that means to go start at the origin. Let me use blue and go over four, up zero. So number of toppings, four, cost zero dollars. Six toppings, go over to six, is going to cost three dollars, so that's here. Eight toppings will be six dollars. 10 toppings will be nine dollars. Nope, I missed that one, that's seven. Let me move that up to nine. Okay, right here, $9. And 12 toppings is going to cost $12. So then I'm gonna get my ruler out. Always should use a ruler when we're drawing 
lines on graphs. We want to be as accurate as possible. So when I bring my ruler down here and then rotate it to line it up the best I can, okay, trying to make it parallel here and then move it over. Okay, right here is about right. And if I drew a line right there, that would be the graph. Now let me not graph uh, beyond the given points. Okay, so right there. And I really, let me just move this line now up. And then it's easier for me to erase when I'm done there. And so I'm going to start at that point four and then go up to 1212, 12, which was right here. Okay, so in order for something to be a proportion, it must be a straight line, check, and it must go through the origin. Well, if I had a point zero, zero now, I would have to be over here, so that is obviously not a straight line. So let me get rid of that, and now I'm going to say not a proportion and the explanation to come. Okay, so this says although the points appear on a line, the quantities are not proportional to each other because the line does not go through the origin. Each topping does not have the same unit cost. Okay, so there's one. Okay, here's problem two. Here's group two. This says the school library receives money for every book sold at the school's book fair. The ratios represent the number of books sold, number of books sold, to the amount of money the library receives. So I'm going to write books or number of books sold. Okay. And money received. So there's my table. Now I have these values. So what this is saying is if you if they sold one book, they made $5. Two books, $10. The library received $15 for selling three books, and four to 20, and five to 25. So those are the values I'm going to plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is label my x-axis, label my y, label my origin, and x is my left column, and y is my right column. So I'm going to say number of books sold and money received is a left column. Okay. And we sold five books, so if I just go in every other one, so this is one, two, three, four, five, so it's not really squeezed together. Okay. And then I go in order of fives, and let me go every other one is five. Here's five, go two, that's 10, go two, that's 15, 20, and go two more, and that's 25. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to plot these points. This is the point one comma five. This is the point two comma 10, three comma 15, and so on. 4 comma 20, forgot the 0, and then 5 comma 25. So when I plot this, let me use blue again. If I bought one book or sold one book, then they received $5. Sold two books, they received $10. Sold three books, received $15. Four books, 20, and five books is right here at $25. 20, 25 is up here. I need to move that last dot to there. Okay, I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to rotate it so it's parallel. Get it as close as possible. Okay, right about there. And I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to continue this though down to here for a reason. Okay, so there's my straight line. All my points were on that line. 
So it looks like it's proportional. And it, notice I continued my line down to the origin. So if I sold zero books, I'd make zero dollars. And that point zero zero is also on the line. So then this is proportional. Okay. It is proportional. Okay. So this one says the school library receives money for every book sold at the school's book fair. Create a table and then graph and explain the quantities are proportional to each other. Well, in this case, they are proportional. I brought in, and the reason it's proportional is the quantities are proportional to each other because the points appear on a line that goes through the origin. Each book sold brings in $5 no matter how many books are sold. Okay, so I think that is going to be all I'm going to do today on this video. I showed one example that is a proportion, this one, and I showed one that was not. And this is going to continue. And in class, what we did was we're going to do a gallery walk and look at all the posters and answer these questions. Were there any differences found in the groups that had the same ratios? Did you notice any common mistakes? How might they be fixed? And so forth. So there's going to be possibly groups that have the same set of numbers, same problem, and may not have the same results. So they did something incorrectly. And that's what the gallery walk is going to identify and it's going to continue and that's the end of this lesson so the summary it basically is um, reviewing the fact that the plotted points in a graph of a proportional relationship lie on a line that passes through the origin that is the end of lesson six go do your problem set